Hey, 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 YouTube. Dalium here. Back with a new Honest Game review. These reviews will focus on seven different gaming aspects, those being story, characters, art style, controls, interface, replayability, and overall enjoyability. And with that being said, it's time for the evaluation. Today we are looking into a 3D physics-based indie puzzle platformer made by Sumo Digital. This platformer is called Snake Pass. There, you know, because I'm doing the S thing, the S. Now, before I start the review, I have to issue a spoiler warning. This is a spoiler warning. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's begin. Snake Pass features a snake named Noodle and his little tropical bird friend. In this game, something catastrophic happens to the physical gateways between the various worlds. In turn, the energy sources from the gateways are scattered about. Animals traveling from one world to another are now stuck in, the, in an environment that's not their own. When this happens, a, the little tropical bird then wakes up Noodle the snake and tells him that they need to repair the gateways before they close. The snake and the bird then travel from world to world, collecting the different energy sources, there being three per world, and restoring the gateway in each world. Now, the motivation to do the right thing is a good enough reason for Noodle and the bird to go on you know, an adventure. Though, as the story progresses, they start to introduce you know a new characters they give they give a new character a silhouette in the story at the end of each level and this is where the story kind of falls apart the silhouetted character turns out to be this tiny crow who is trying to get home and blew up the gates accidentally well incidentally accidentally incidentally noodle Noodle's little bird friend simply told the crow to ask for help next time and poof Crow flies away, story ends. The motivation behind the characters are definitely present, though the ending was just plain weak. The story built up the crow and do didn't do anything with it. And for that, I give the story a 3 out of 10. Now, we already discussed the crow character, though it wasn't present for most of the story, therefore no character development happened. Though I did find the relationship between the bird and Noodle to be quite strongly matched. Noodle seemed confused, and the bird seemed to keep Noodle on track. Noodle was the body, the bird was the brains. They fit each other well, so well. Though, once again, there is no character development at all. Therefore, I'm going to give the characters a 7 out of 10. Now, this game had one thing perfect from preview to review, and that is the scenery. There doesn't need to be a long explanation for why or why not this game was beautiful. Just the colors, the animations, and the noises that went along with it were just so beautiful. And it just... this gives the art style a score of 10 out of 10. And now we're two controls. Okay, okay, ha <laughs> ha. Ah, this was frustrating. Controlling Noodle was horrifyingly difficult at times. Sometimes you would be slithering on a flat surface, and you would just slow down for no apparent reason. Sometimes you would just stop, button still pressed down, snake not moving. Though the most frustrating part of the game controls would have to be keeping the camera on Noodle things got in the way, the camera would be way zoomed out or way zoomed in. Now, this is mainly on the later levels, and this isn't a normal occurrence. The only upside to the controls was the ease of diving underwater and the ability to hold on to the surrounding bamboo and obstacles in order to, you know, get to certain collectibles. Honestly, the controls in this game were pretty poor, and the highest I would rank them are 3 out of 10. Recovering itself from the controls would have to be the interface. When trying to find different saves and navigate the menu system, 
this game nails it right on the head. Nobody could have made a better user-friendly interface for this game. So, I give the interface a 10 out of 10. When you finish the game, you're kind of relieved it's over. You feel tired of wrapping around bamboo and trying to find the different collectibles. Then the game introduces this little devil called Snake Vision. Snake Vision makes it makes all of the missing collectibles very, very easy and clear to see and find. And to be honest, this made me go back immediately to get everything I was missing so I could 100% the game. It seemed worth it. The simple addition making the exhausted player turn into the exact ex ecstatic ecstatic player. I give this a 9 out of 10. The one point missing because there's virtually nothing you can do with the 100% except unlock 8-bit noodle. As for how much I enjoyed the game, it was addictive. I played one or two levels a day and because they were really long levels and they were really really fun. The game was beautiful though the beginning was so oh, very slow. I would maybe sell this game for $15 instead of 20 though I do believe it's on sale the time of the making of this video time of the making. Huh? For overall enjoyability 7 out of 10. And if you were to take all of these scores and average them out, the final score would end up being 7 out of 10. Do I recommend this game? Indeed I do. Though, get it while it's on sale. It, it's not worth $20. <laughs> and with all of that being said, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified whenever I upload. 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 <laughs> Thank you all so very much. Links are down in the description below. A new video every weekend, and you all have a fantastic day. Dallium Gaming.